Welcome one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's The Simpsons, Bart vs. the Juggernauts, brought to us by Acclaim. Bart vs. the Juggernauts is the second Simpsons game on the Nintendo Game Boy, following up Bart Simpson's escape from Camp Deadly. In the game, you're playing as Bart Simpson, who is now in a weird game show that's kind of mimicking American Gladiators. Various Simpsons characters have events during the show, and your goal is to go through four weeks of the show, earning money each week. You must hit a certain goal of money each week in order to continue playing the game. If you don't reach that goal, it ends up being a game over. So here we go with Bart vs. the Juggernauts for the Nintendo Game Boy. As we begin the game, we actually get the credits for the title before we get to our first little cutscene. The show is hosted by Kent Brockman and Dr. Marvin Monroe, and they have a little bit of banter, which I will show you, but there's a lot of banter that ends up being repeated as you make it farther in, so later cutscenes I'll probably be skipping through since it's the same exact dialogue every time. Usually after completing events, you'll get the same things. Each week you have different mini-games that you'll have to complete, and they increase in the amount that you have to complete every week. Week 1 only contains 2, and then 1 is added for each week afterwards. For week 1, you have Marvin Monroe's event, as well as Captain Murdoch's event. This is during the early seasons of The Simpsons, so the characters, including Captain Murdoch, as well as the prize for winning the entire game, which I won't spoil till we get there, is very much based on early episodes, obviously since the game came out in 1992. This event has Bart on a skateboard. Your goal is to skate down, holding down the button to increase your speed, dodging in between all the various hazards. There's only a couple that you have to dodge. Then, when you end up launching yourself off the ramp at the end, you have to make sure that you're able to kick the enemy and knock him off his platform in order to successfully complete it. You get a couple of attempts at this. I failed on my first one, but thankfully on the second one, I'll be able to get that drop kick to go off and land against the bad guy, knocking him off his platform and thus completing the event. After you complete an event, you'll then have your money tallied up, based on how many chances it took you, completing the event and actually winning it, as well as how much time was left on the clock for the events that are time-based, where you have to beat it within a certain amount of time. The second event for week number one is Dr. Marvin Monroe's Hop, Skip, and Fry. This event we have to do three times. It's not particularly my favorite event, but it is the most consistent, at least as far as being able to complete it. Some of the events, as you'll see as we get a little bit farther in, are just completely luck-based on whether or not I'm able to actually complete them half the time. In this one, it's a pretty much a basketball game. You have two juggernauts or giant thug guys that are going to be hopping all around, and you have squares that are either white or black. The black ones shock you. If you get shocked three times, you end up losing. Your goal is to try to get as many balls into the hoop as possible. You go across by hopscotching your way through, and then throwing the ball into the hoop for it to count as a point. You then have to go all the way back across the field in order to grab the ball again and being able to score another point. Throughout the course of it, the course will change up, making the squares different colors at different places. When you see it start to flash, I recommend getting it into the air. 
it's a lot of luck and of course it's completely random but I found that if I'm jumping and if I'm on a safe spot and then I'm in midair going to another spot that may not particularly be safe, it doesn't matter, I usually have a better chance of surviving when the whole flashing and changing of the spots ends up ending. Probably completely luck, I'm sure it is. But I found this way at least somewhat more consistent as far as making sure that I don't end up getting shocked, though this still ends up happening from time to time. If you run into one of the juggernauts though, you will end up getting bounced to another spot, like three or four away. So this could either put you at another safe spot, or it could end up putting you at a dangerous spot and you end up getting shocked, so it's best to try to avoid them. They keep moving, so if there's one stepping on a spot that you particularly need, they will move a few seconds later, you can get to that spot and continue along your way, or you can just try to keep moving around until you end up going through. Your goal, of course, like I said, is to get as many of these balls into the hoop as possible, and you'll be rewarded extra money for the more that you're able to get in. Obviously, this is one of the more straightforward events, but it also can be a little bit more of the tedious style of event that this game does have to offer, since it does get kind of repetitive, and you end up having to do it not once, but three times total throughout the game. For finishing up the second event, we get all of our money and plenty of money to spare for making the weekly goal. If you win all the events in a week, you also get a bonus game to get even more extra money. You need all the money that you can possibly get in order to actually get the goal for the fourth and final week, so take advantage and try to get as much money as possible. Even if you're able to reach that week's goal or you're way ahead of that week's goal, keep trying to earn more because the final goal is pretty difficult to do. The bonus game just has you dropping weights on this weightlifter, just moving back and forth. You have to make it even, so put one weight on one side and then the opposite side and then just keep going back and forth until you end up dropping all the weights. You have to drop more each week in order to complete the bonus game, and you'll get a little bit of extra money for doing it. Week number three adds two new events. We have to do Marvin Monroe's event again, but now we have Mr. Burns's and Moe's event, and both of these are a complete crapshoot because getting the controls to work half the time is extremely finicky. It's basically a jousting game in Mr. Burns's nuclear plant bop till you drop. Here you have to face off with another one of the juggernauts and knock them off the platform into, I guess, nuclear waste on the bottom. Vicious. Uh, but what you're able to do is swing either upwards, duck and swing at their legs, or poke forward in order to kind of stab at them. The whole time little things are being thrown at you from the foreground towards you, you can actually use these as weapons and knock them into your opponent in order to hit them. Controls are very, very slow, and the timing of being able to hit them multiple times in a row can be difficult. A lot of times I just find myself mashing the same exact thing over and over again, hoping that it hits, because they're going to dodge it a bunch of times in a row, or they're not going to dodge it. It doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason or a ton of strategy involved, other than potentially timing it for when the objects come from the foreground and trying to hit them at him, though that can be difficult because your swings take so long for the animations to happen before you're able to set back up again in order to swing and knock that object towards them, it's already ended up hitting you in the head. 
You have a time limit at the bottom, and of course you want to do so quickly so you get more money for having more time left, but your goal is whoever ends up getting KO'd three times is the loser, and if you're able to knock your opponent down all three times, you win the event. Next up is Moe's Tavern's Shove Fest, and this is another one that's similar to the jousting game where I don't quite understand if there's really a strategy other than it can be a lot of luck in order to complete it. Here your goal is to shove an opponent off of the mat, basically like a sumo match. The controls are very finicky. You can jump as well as you can push your opponent. Standing still, you won't be able to move, but you're able to gain momentum if you're going towards them and timing your push. Though you have to push way before you end up hitting them, because if you don't do it early enough, you'll end up just running into your opponent and end up negating the shove. You can also slam your opponent by hitting the push and then hitting backwards or up on the D-pad. It never seems to work for me. I got it to work one time during this run where I was able to slam my opponent backwards in order to complete them. But most of the time, I just keep pushing them as close as I can. Or I do another strategy where I'll jump over them in order to get them close to the edge and then quickly go around them to the other side and then push them off. Whatever strategy ends up working best, once you've knocked off both of your opponents twice each, you end up being the victor. You'll get to see this event again as we have to do it again later on. The third event for week number two is another one of the Marvin Monroe games, and this is the same one as before. It's identical. I don't think it gets any more difficult, so if you were able to do it pretty well the first time, you'll be able to do it pretty well the second time. It's pretty long and boring that you have to wait 90 seconds on this timer, which seems to take forever when doing these rounds, because I just kind of get bored before I'm able to run out the clock. I do have to say though, while I don't find this game particularly exciting, at least it plays the best. The controls, other than sometimes it can be a little bit finicky when you're holding down the button, which you have to do in order to do the longer jump, can sometimes, if you don't let it go quick enough and you're doing quick succession jumps, you'll end up doing the wrong kind of jump. But outside of that, this game actually functions the best control-wise compared to every other one of the minigames in this collection.
After what feels like an eternity here, I finally get to the end of my timer, but I ended up getting shocked, unfortunately. So I lose a little bit of money, but really not that much uh, overall. But I got plenty of scores, so we easily complete it. At the end of week two, completing all the events, we do another one of the weight mini games here. If you end up dropping a weight and misses, you just get another one a few seconds later, you just lose out in a couple of seconds. A very easy bonus game. Considering some of the other games are very, very finicky and difficult to get through, this one, thankfully, this little bonus game is very easy to do. Week number three has four events for us to complete. We have to get $52,000 in order to successfully move on to week four. We have two new events as well as two that we've already done. Starting off, we're going to be doing the Krusty Land Hammer Slammer event. Basically, you have four tests of strengths where you have to use the hammer in order to knock up the thing. And each of these have one of the juggernauts trying to slowly crawl down it. When you pick one, you'll then be able to get your power gauge going, and of course you'll want to have the power gauge all the way maxed out, so you potentially can hit the guy back up. If any of them end up making it all the way to the bottom before the timer runs out, you end up losing the event. So there is definitely a little bit of uh, critical timing here. Uh, it can be difficult in order to keep them all up at one time. A couple of them will move usually faster than others. So even though I usually start off by just kind of going one after another and keep knocking them up, they don't go in the same order and the same speed every time. They'll some of them will end up speeding up a little bit faster and other ones will end up slowing down. So because of this, you got to be careful when knocking them back up into the air. The good thing at least is this event works pretty well. You can also go a little bit faster if you double tap into one of the directions so you can quickly get back to one of the areas and hit the uh, switch again to knock the uh, guy back up into the air. If you're able to survive for the entire timer, you'll be rewarded, and then we get to go back and select another one of the games. The next event that we're going to be doing is Captain Murdoch's. This is the same exact one that we did before. You have to make sure that you get down the ramp, holding down the button, dodge in and out of everything here. Thankfully, it's usually pretty easy to do. And then when you launch up into the air, make sure you land that drop kick on the juggernaut who's protecting the platform. And very easy to win this one. It's very quick. I think the fastest event by far in the game. We now have the Mo event and Herman's Military Minefield Mayhem. Now this is another weird one. You start off by parachuting down, dodging in and out of flying swords and water balloons or grenades. You have to use Bart's parachute to get him to go back and forth in order to dodge the swords and then the things being shot out of the cannon. It's not 
too difficult to kind of get used to the momentum of this, and you have a certain number of hits you can do. When you get to the bottom, though, you have to make sure that you hit the brakes, basically holding up Bart's legs so that you land and be able to continue. If you crash land too hard, you'll end up failing and have to redo it. Then, you now have to run on land over to the right side, watching out for mines, as well as crawling underneath the barbed wire while they're trying to fire at you with all these cannons. The hit detection is atrocious, to say the least. Trying to dodge in and out of the mines that are placed on the ground is a nightmare. You have to make sure you're pixel perfect in order to get around these mines. It's not too long of an event, but because the hit detection is so bad on the mines in particular, it's much more difficult than it needs to be. The last event we're going to do for week 3 is the Moe's Tavern event. This is the same one that we did earlier with the shoving. And uh, it's the same opponents that we have to deal with as well for this. So I'm going to jump over the opponent and then try to get back around them. It can be sometimes difficult I'll jump into them. But I can then kind of like circumvent that and go around them and still be able to get my pushes in order to knock them off the platform. You, like I said, you can throw them. You do have that ability to throw them, and that does work really well as far as getting them to go a pretty good distance away from you. But at the same time, it just seems very unreliable. So this is usually the strategy that I found to work most of the time. Barney is a little bit harder to do the jump over and around, get the time it a little bit better because obviously he takes up a little bit more space than your first opponent, but it's still pretty much the same ordeal. Once we're able to take out Barney for the second time here, we'll be moving on to the bonus game once again, and then on to week four, the fourth and final week of the game. The bonus game here is the same as we've done before, except now you have more weights to drop on to the bar here. Have two giant heavy weights, and then you'll have the small weights to uh, add to the end. So you have two to start off on each side, then three on each side, and then finally four on each side in order to successfully complete the bonus game all of the times. Now for the fourth week, you have five events to complete, and you have to get $100,000 total. For the events we've already done before, and there is a fifth new event, which is a Pooh's event, which is a little bit of a weird one. The first event we're going to be doing is Marvin Monroe's again. This is the only event that we have to do three times in the game here. Uh, still not necessarily a very fun event, but still pretty easy for us to complete and be able to get some decent amount of money uh, to begin week number four here. This is one of those Simpsons games that I never really had as a kid, and I didn't even know there were so many Simpsons related games on the Game Boy until many years later, and then it was surprising to me that you had uh, Escape from Camp Deadly, you had Bart vs. the Juggernauts, and then you had also, a little bit after this one, you had the likes of Bart and the Beanstalk, which I did actually play when I was younger, and then you even had the Itchy and Scratchy mini golf game, and a few years after, it took a little while, but then you had the uh, Night of the Living Treehouse of Horror uh, for the Game Boy Color, which was released in 2001. While there has been a lot of Simpsons games, not only on handheld systems, but of course on the consoles, it's been a while since we've seen a new Simpsons game. The Simpsons game was released in 2007 to go along with the Simpsons movie that was released, and since then there's been no more mainstream console released 
Simpsons titles on handheld systems or on consoles or even PC, uh, other than a few mobile-related games that have come out. I'm surprised someone hasn't tried to pick up the license in some way and make some sort of new Simpsons-related game, but then again, licensed games in general have pretty much died out other than on the mobile market. The second event we're going to do here is the Monty Burns nuclear plant one. Just like the first time around with this one, it's really kind of a crapshoot. And a lot of times I just kind of mash the same attacks repeatedly. You can dodge the attacks in and out if you want to, if you want to get fancy with it. But for the most part, I find just kind of mashing the same attack or multiple attacks, whatever you want to do, is just the best to kind of consistently keep hitting him. If he didn't heal up in between hits, because after a little bit he will get his health back, if that wasn't the case, it could have a lot more strategy to it because you have a limited number of health. Uh, but because of the way that it's set up, it's really just kind of just mashing it and hoping that you're hit. Or get lucky enough to time it so that you're able to hit the object into him, which will pretty much instantly knock him off the platform. If you time it right, you actually can block the projectile if the enemy hits it. In this case, like he'll block it when we hit him at him this time. But thankfully, I'm able to hit the rest of the hits I need and finish up the minigame. Next up, we have the Minefield game again, and this one is just as annoying the second time around as it was the first time. Try to do my best to watch out for most of the attacks. You can slow up a little bit and lift your legs up if need be in order to avoid some of the weapons, so keep that in mind. Just make sure that you land softly at the bottom so that you're able to get out of parachute. The mines, like I said, are just, wow, do they mess up. Sometimes they're like this, where they're so close together, I have to kind of just barely squeak by. Now, if you end up running into one, you don't instantly fail, you get another chance. That's what your extra uh, runs and the hits are, are for, but still, just, wow, why set it up that way, or why be so sensitive with the hit detection? Just a little bit of better programming would have made this more enjoyable. Also, Bart's kind of movements, as you can see, are, are really, really stiff. The fourth game we get to do here is the crusty one again, and uh, this is the exact same as before. You have 60 seconds, and we just have to keep hitting the test of strengths in order to keep these evil juggernaut guys at bay. Keep hitting them in the butt, or the crotch, or I don't know what exactly we're hitting with these crusty faces. I, I really don't want to think about too much. And we repeatedly keep hitting them in that area with, uh, with this, so... Yeah. Also, the, just the sprite... The face of Krusty in the background is something that if you look at it enough, it'll probably haunt your dreams, so be careful of staring at it for, for too long.
Not much more can be said really about it. Once we finish up the timer, we're moving on to the fifth and final game here in week number four. Now this last event is a Pooh's event, the Quickie Mart Doggy Dodge. I don't know why it's dog related at the Quickie Mart, I don't get the correlation. Uh, basically you're trying to get a squishy. In order to get to a poo and get a squishy, you have to climb through an obstacle course filled with dog cages and rabid dogs. You have a limited number of chances, you can see at the bottom, there's a few items like the bones that you can use to throw and the dogs will be distracted by them, uh, as well as you can get another object that they can then attack your arms freely and that'll also uh, be able to save you from being mauled to death by these dogs. It's just a very simple platforming area. It actually doesn't control too bad, Bart kind of moves a little bit slippery. But other than that, it's still not a bad playing little mini game here. It honestly partly feels like this level was going to be in another Simpsons game altogether, and they were just doing the Juggernaut game and kind of threw this one in there. When you make it up here, it's a little bit hard to see, but you'll have the, I guess they're hot dogs, like a hot dog links together, or rags tied together, I don't know. Either way, you have to jump to these as the dogs are lifting them up and down, uh, and they will allow you to cross some of the gaps. That's something that's a little bit difficult to even see and figure out that you have to do that. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward uh, mini game or level or whatever you want to call this. You can jump over the dogs pretty easily as well a lot of times. Um, if they are close, you may want to walk away and then try to get a running jump so that you're able to get past them and up the platforms. But a lot of times, it's very easy uh, to dodge them all together. You don't have a time limit either, so you can take your time with this. And you can sometimes accidentally fall down the lower platforms, uh, including one spot where you can kind of fall down all the way multiple layers down to the very bottom and the very beginning of this whole thing. So you definitely want to be careful of that while going through. After quite a bit of climbing, you will eventually make it to Apu, who ends up rewarding you with a squishy. So at least you get that. And then we get to have our total amount of money racked up, and if you're able to get over $100,000, then you're rewarded with the game's ending. And yet, for winning the event, you're rewarded with your own Truckosaurus from the Season 2 episode, Bart the Daredevil. Uh, really funny that you end up winning this. Truckosaurus never really appeared again that much in Simpsons, though is also in the Simpsons Hit and Run video game. I think this and Hit and Run are the only main video games for the Simpsons that Truckosaurus appears in. But anyway, still kind of cool. At least it's somewhat of an ending. It's not necessarily a great ending, but it is somewhat of an ending. And then after this scene, you go back to the title screen and you can start the game all over again. But with that, guys, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.